fists. You know, it's gone one step further where they want they want to start looking at um, where they want to take revenge with guns. And you get black on black shootings where peanuts are paid. I mean, favors are done. You know, just go and shoot him. Or they go and see, say to some youngster, here's a couple of hundred quid, walk around the corner and shoot him for us, and they do it. Yeah. It's madness, it's absolute madness. It's 11 a.m. and Rod Austin's been called to a shooting. It's rare. Most shootings happen after dark. Trident has just received a phone call um, from, which station is it? Yeah, Streatham. From Streatham. Um, police station to say that there's been a discharge of a firearm. We've got two black males. They have an altercation. One pulls out a gun and apparently uh, shoots the other. Just to run through it, we've got 11.13, there's a fight at that bus stop there, and there's two guys with, with guns. Yeah. Um, one guy's been um, shot, he's got um, entry and exit wounds to the right upper thigh. Right. Um, we got a MAC-10 in a pink bag. A MAC-10? A MAC-10. Jesus. The MAC-10 is a lethal machine pistol that fires 1,100 rounds a minute. It was the weapon of choice for US Special Forces during the Vietnam War. Just before you get to the barrel of the weapon, you can see some green tape. There's a small silver object attached to it, and that creates a laser, uh, which will obviously switch on, point at the target, and it'll help them to obviously shoot the right target. Um, very crudely done, but at the end of the day, relatively effective, because you, point, you get the laser sights at the right person, it'll just generally find the right direction. Very lethal weapon. A second gun was found at the scene, a 9mm pistol. In the past four years, Trident has seized over 650 guns in London. The days where you had the old-fashioned armed mobile with the sawn-off shotgun, they tend to have disappeared. Uh, you know, they would just pull out the gun for that particular crime, shove it down their trousers or inside their raincoat, go in, do the armed robbery and walk out again. Our people are carrying the guns all the time. You know, they're with them 24 hours a day. So it has to be concealed so that we and the public don't realise they're carrying a gun. Most of the people we deal with use every single type of gun you can imagine, from machine pistols to 38s to 45s to replicas to converted weapons, everything under the sun. One of the biggest challenges we face at the moment is where the guns are coming from. There's no doubt that some of them have been around for many years, but what we've seen of late are more and more guns that we can't really trace, and there's some suggestions that many are coming from the former Soviet Union, former Yugoslavia, and even current conflicts such as Iraq. But I don't think nationally we've really got a full picture on where some of these guns are now coming from. It's five days since Marcus Cox was gunned down in Tottenham. Some locals in the black community are now coming forward with information. Four different people have been put up as the gunmen. Each had a motive. Trident learned what might have provoked the shooting. Two nights earlier, Marcus Cox trashed the Jamaican's car after a fight in a snooker hall. The team turns out in force to see if anyone will confirm this story. They succeed. One man who saw the fight gives a statement to Reg Rording. He was uh, in a side room um, with friends playing cards where uh, all of a sudden the uh, noise level within the snooker club uh, went up as a result of an argument that was ensuing between the victim and uh, another person. Um, they went out to investigate and within seconds uh, the snooker balls were picked up and were, were being thrown around uh, the snooker club. About 45 minutes later the friend that he was playing cards with, Blacker, had his car smashed up outside the snooker club. Marcus Cox and four friends vandalised Blacker's £20,000 BMW parked outside McDonald's. Among London's gangs, this is more than enough to provoke a shooting. The hunt is on for Blacker. Mark Brooks and Paul Wheatley prepare to look for him and his damaged car. There are five Trident teams involved in the search. So, I don't want to take any risks, we're just kitting up just in case uh, he is armed and wants to fight. We're going to go 
and I'm going to try and make some love for ourselves. We've got a couple of addresses, so we're going to go and have a look for, and see if we can find a BMW now. There's, uh, yeah, I stand for, for a gold BMW coupe. There's a book by the winner. On a wire edge. Now, we have a home address for Blackham, and maybe this uh, vehicle may be somewhere parked in the vicinity. We have obviously a murderer, or we believe to be a murderer at this stage, which intelligence suggests is a murderer, um, and he may still have access to that firearm or other firearms. If we locate his vehicle, we need to contain it, so uh, safety in mind first. We'll just contain it and then get the, uh, the gunships down. Probably up until five years ago, we would have just stepped in and knocked on someone's door, not worried about our... Uh our own safety, but the rules have changed now, unfortunately. And uh, oh, it's like when well, we were at school, we used to fight with fists. Now it's gone through the, gun, the knife stage, and now it's at guns. So they don't fight fairly. They don't find Blacker or the car, but the next day they have more luck. The car is spotted and impounded. Marcus Cox and his friends had caused thousands of pounds of damage. Police across Britain are alerted that Blacker is wanted for murder. While he had enemies, Marcus Cox was also well known and popular. Over 500 people attended his funeral. He was the eldest child in a large family who regularly visits his grave. His mother knew of his criminal activity but says it makes losing him no easier. Oh, we're here today to celebrate his, not his death, but his life, and to show how much we love him and miss him. Because his brother's dad is here today. Out of love, it's not the first time we've been back. You know, there's always someone coming here, always. Yeah. Marcus Cox never met his daughter. She was born after he died. I would never, never wish this on my worst enemy, you know? Gosh, I would not wish this on anyone to lose their child, especially on their first child. Well, this is not supposed to happen, you know? It's supposed to be burying your child, should you really? They're supposed to outlive us, not we outlive them, you know? John Coles heads to City Hall for a meeting with leading figures from London's black community. They act as Trident's independent advisers. We're off to the IAG, which is the Trident Independent Advisory Group, which is a meeting held monthly with representatives of the various black communities from across London. Uh, and we have a very in-depth discussion about issues, but very forthright and very honest. And they say to us what they think. You know, if they think we're getting it wrong, they tell us. But at the same time, they do listen to what we tell them. And I think as time has moved on, they've actually become great supporters of what we've tried to do in tackling gun crime in London. Sorry, 9.2. We are hurting from this. And these people are not part of our community. They're dealing in debt, and we are the ones that are hurting at the end of the day. What I am concerned about is the fact that the more professional, more ruthless, more hardened offender within Trident's remit is gradually being reduced. And what we're seeing is the emergence of the kids carrying the guns who are not going out necessarily to kill, but they're going out carrying the guns to discharge them with these disrespect issues, these silly forms out. And the shootings that are taking place are taking place over very, you know, pretty right. pathetic, ridiculous mm -hmm. arguments. We are not going to crack this issue unless we all understand that there is only so much 24 odd people can do. The issue is about bending the mainstream. It's about getting local authorities, education, youth service to do their thing so we don't have to bloody well exist. The following day, John Coles is back at City Hall. This time, he's speaking to a tougher audience. Trident's advisors are holding an anti gun conference for teenagers who may be tempted by drugs, money, and guns. Afternoon, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just bring this a bit closer so you can actually hear me. 
I warn you now that some of the things I'm going to show you are quite disturbing. But